In this video, I will show you how to do a survival analysis in SAS. Before watching this video, please watch my other two videos on how to do survival analysis, the explanations as well as the example, and download the SAS program and data set from my website. Here I have opened up the program in SAS and I have already executed it and these are the results. And we would be dealing with data on unemployment. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the data set and look at this. So we have um, the dependent variable would be how long it's taken people uh, to be unemployed until they find a job. So it's a combination between this spell variable, which is the number of periods that they were unemployed, and the event. Event in our case is uh, w whether or not they have found a job. So one, if they have found a job, zero otherwise. So notice that here I renamed this variable to event because the censored variable would be just the opposite of that. It's a censored observation if you haven't found a job yet and we don't know what happened to you. There are several independent variables that we will consider. One of them would be whether or not they have unemployment insurance, and this will be a one for the group that does. We would also consider log of wage as well as age as independent variables. So as I said, the dependent variable is spelled that denotes time and the event denotes the event. And the independent variables are log wage, unemployment insurance, and age. We would also be comparing groups by unemployment insurance. One thing to notice here is that later on in the program, you see where you see, uh, where you see here event of zero. It's important that you know whether to put here a zero or a one. And this number in parentheses would be the value for which the subject is censored. So here the event is equal to 1 if a person finds a job. So therefore, when it's equal to 0, this means that the person hasn't found a job yet and it's censored. And that's why we are putting it the value of 0. 1, you found a job, that's the event or the failure, and 0, that's the censored, we don't know what happened to you. The first thing to do is summarize the data with PROC means, and you put the name of the variables here, and we see that the average duration of unemployment is 6.24 periods, and the event has happened for 32% of the sample of the subject. You can also take a look at the variable spell with PROC univariate and here you have a little bit more detailed information as far as the minimum median is 5 and the maximum number is 28. The next thing that we can do is uh, work on graphs. So these would be the non-parametric models and the graph of the survival function would be done with PROC life test, you're reading in the data, plots, uh, no table, because otherwise you're going to have a very long table there. And then time would be the spell variable times the event variable, um, which is the censored or the event variable. So this is the figure that we're getting here, and this is the Kaplan-Meier uh, survival uh, function here. You can see how it starts at 1, and then for the next period it will drop down to 81% and so on. And then we have in period 28, it's 31%. So over time, we're seeing that uh, less and less individual of, uh, of the subjects, fewer of the subjects are remaining in the sample. So say after 10 periods, you have about 60% is still unemployed being in the sample. The next thing that we can look at is um, we can graph the survival and hazards function. And here is another um, survival, um, survival curve, basically very similar to what I described before. And here is the hazard function. And this hazard function varies um, 
between the ranges of say 2% and 5% so given that you have made it up until that point this is your per percent chance that you will find a job at that time so it varies between 2% uh, and 5% in this case you have total number of observations 3,343 the numbers that are failed is 1,073 and these are the censored observations. The next thing that we can do is we can also um, graph these um, curves, the survival curves or the functions by group and then we can compare those uh, to see if they're significantly different from each other and here we have the graphs so the ones that have unemployment insurance their value is one and this is the graph that's higher and the ones that don't have insurance their value is zero and their graph is lower so at any point in time if you actually look at period 10 then you have those that don't have in, uh, unemployment uh, insurance they're 50 percent likely uh, to remain in the sample and those that do have unemployment insurance they're about 75 percent likely to be in the sample so if you do have unemployment insurance you're actually more likely to still be unemployed and that's actually not a good thing so notice that all of these um, all of these use PROC life test and they all specify the time as the combination of the duration and the event variable and if you want to do it by groups you do that with strata and then you put the group the dummy variable here it's not going to work with the continuous variable it has to be um, like different categories the next thing that we can do here is uh, estimate the parametric and semi-parametric models and here are the results on this side the first one that we're going to do is the uh, exponential uh, model and we, we will accomplish this with PROC life reg you're reading in the data and the model again notice that this is the dependent variable you need to provide both the time as well as uh, the censored value which is a zero for our event variable and then you have to put your independent variables here and for distribution you put exponential so these are the coefficients here and notice as I have in my uh, handout that they actually produce opposite coefficients of what theta would produce and similar to what R would produce so you have to be very careful how you interpret these numbers and make sure that you always go by the last one the Cox proportional hazard model because that model gives the same coefficients and signs in all programs so the way to interpret this number here is that um, if you have individuals that have higher wages they would have lower unemployment duration meaning that they will terminate the unemployment faster and individuals who claim unemployment insurance would have higher unemployment durations meaning that they will terminate their unemployment low, uh, slower okay so the next commands are very similar we would just go here with the Weibull distribution and then with the log logistic one and if you look at the results they're very similar so again similar interpretation on these and this is the last one for the log logistic and I have those in the handout so the last regression to uh, discuss is the Cox proportional hazards model and we would do this with PROC PH reg and we would read in the data and here the setup is very much the same as before and note that these coefficients here are very similar in values to the ones before but they have just the opposite results so again the way to interpret this 0.46 is that individuals with higher wages would have 
lower unemployment duration, which means that they will terminate the unemployment faster, you know, more quickly. And then individuals who claim unemployment insurance would have higher unemployment duration, which means that they will terminate their unemployment insurance slower. So um, that's what the results mean. Okay, so thank you for watching and come back again for more videos.